Summary of a Streetcar Named Desire by Tennessee Williams New Orleans in the 1940s is the setting for the drama, which takes place in a city that is shabby but rakishly attractive. Stella and Stanley Kowalski live in the apartment on the first floor of a rundown corner building. Williams uses a movable set so that the audience can see both the inside and outside of the apartment at the same time. Aunt Blanche Du Bois shows up, they told me to get on a streetcar called Desire, then switch to one called Cemeteries, ride six blocks, and get off at Elysian Fields. Blanche is a Southern Belle from Laurel, Mississippi, who is getting old. She is dressed all in white and is an English teacher, not a schoolmarm. She is thin and moth-like. Blanche tells Stella that the family property, Belle Reve, has been lost and that she has been given time off from her job as a teacher because she is nervous. Blanche attacks Stella's environment and is sad that Stella has fallen from becoming a member of their wealthy family. Stella is humble and respectful, while Blanche is haughty and polished. Stanley Kowalski, Stella's husband, on the other hand, has a sexuality that is raw, animal, and violent. Blanche flutters around in the bath, in the dark, and surrounded by soft clothes and fake jewelry. Stanley, on the other hand, rips off his sweaty shirts under the kitchen light bulb. Stella still worries about her sister, but her life is now set by being married to Stanley. Their relationship is mostly based on energy in the bedroom. The fact that Stella is pregnant makes her ties to New Orleans even stronger, not to the lost Belle Reve. She is having a new Kowalski child, not a Du Bois child. Stanley searches Blanche's trunk while she's taking a bath because he thinks Blanche sold Belle Reve and lied to Stella to get the inheritance for herself. Blanche tells Stanley that the estate was lost because of a non-paying debt and shows him the bank papers to prove it. In the evening, Blanche and Stella come back from an evening out. Stanley and his friends are still in the middle of a drunk poker night in the kitchen, which is filled with lurid nocturnal brilliance, the raw colors of childhood's spectrum. Blanche is interested in Stanley's friend Mitch, and when she asks Stella about him, she cleverly moves in the light so that she is caught in outline while she is still half-dressed. Blanche and Mitch are seeing each other. Blanche puts a paper lamp over a light bulb that isn't lit. Blanche is annoying Stanley because she is in the middle of the card game. Blanche finally turns on the radio, which makes Stanley lose it. He goes into the bedroom and throws the radio out the window. When Stella steps in to try to calm things down, Stanley hits her. Blanche and Stella leave the house and go to Eunice's room upstairs. Stanley feels bad after the other guys spray him with water in the bathroom. This makes him sober up. Stanley falls outside and yells from upstairs, Stella. Stella sneaks back downstairs and into Stanley's arms, and Mitch comforts Blanche when she is upset. Blanche is still crazy in the morning while Stella is calm and beautiful. Stella says that Stanley's anger makes her thrilled, and she says that she's not in anything that she wants to get out of, even though Blanche wants her to leave. Blanche tells them to get in touch with Dallas millionaire Shep Huntley for help getting away. Blanche says that Stella and Stanley are only still together because of the rattletrap streetcar named Desire. Stella and Blanche don't know this, but Stanley hears Blanche say that Stanley is rude and not human. Blanche tells Stella, in this dark march toward whatever it is we're getting close to. Don't, don't hang out with the bad guys. Later, Stanley gives Blanche a few hints that he knows some bad things about her past. Blanche is scared, but the tension doesn't break just yet. A young man comes to the flat to get money for the paper while Blanche waits for Mitch to pick her up for a date. Blanche flirts with him a lot and kisses him on the mouth before Mitch gets there. Blanche is still worried from Stanley's hints when she and Mitch come back from their date. She is utterly exhausted in a way that only a neurasthenic personality can know. Blanche still acts like a simple southern girl and gets red when she gets kissed. Mitch brags about how manly he is, but he does so by talking about how fit he is instead of taking off his sweaty shirt and showing his chest. Blanche tells Mitch in a dramatic way about her sad love life, when she was 16, she married a gay young man who was too good for her. Blanche yelled at her husband while they were dancing the Varsovian polka, and he ended his own life. 
Blanche still can't get over his death, and the polka music in the background will make the play even more strange. After about a month, Blanche is off stage taking a bath while Stella makes her birthday dinner. When Blanche sings Paper Moon from the bathroom, Stanley tells Stella all about her shady past in Laurel. Blanche says, it's a Barnum and Bailey world slash just as phony as it can be slash but it wouldn't be make-believe slash if you believed in me. Blanche moved to the sketchy Hotel Flamingo after she lost Belle Reve, but she was kicked out for being flirtatious. Blanche is not skipping school because she is nervous, she was fired for having an affair with a 17-year-old student. Stella is shocked when Blanche is attacked, and she is even more shocked when Stanley tells her that he told these stories to Mitch. Stanley tells Stella that he bought Blanche a bus ticket back to Mississippi that only goes one way. The birthday dinner for Blanche doesn't have Mitch there. Blanche knows something isn't right. Stanley and Stella are really nervous. Mitch can be reached by phone, but Blanche can't. Stanley, Stella, and the audience all know what Mitch knows, but Blanche doesn't. Stanley gives Blanche the ticket for the bus. Blanche runs out of the room as we hear the faint sounds of the polka. Stan and Stella are about to get into a big fight, but Stella starts to labor. At that point in the evening, Blanche is drunk and by herself in her room, the Varsaviana is playing in her mind. Mitch shows up, also drunk, and talks to Blanche. She agrees that Stanley's stories are true and that she did seek support from strangers after her husband killed himself. There is a Mexican woman at the door with Flores para los muertos. Mitch tries to have sex with Blanche, but he doesn't agree to marry her. He stops himself quickly. He falls away when she yells fire. Fire. Following several hours on the same night, Blanche has been drinking regularly ever since Mitch left. Stan goes home from the hospital to rest before the baby is born. Blanche is dressed up in a silly white dress with a crystal hat. Blanche makes it up that Shep Huntley sent her a letter from Dallas. She then tells Stanley that Mitch begged her forgiveness by getting down on his knees with roses. Stanley bursts her stories by telling her, you come in here, sprinkle the place with powder, spray perfume, and cover the light bulb with a paper lantern. Suddenly, it's Egypt, and you are the queen of the Nile. Taking a drink while sitting on your chair. I say, ha. He runs out of the bathroom in his fancy silk pajamas and walks up to Blanche. Stanley uses physical force to overcome her when she tries to fight back, tiger, tiger. Take off the bottle cap. Put it down. We've been going on this date since the beginning. He drags her limp body to the bed as she falls, and the rising music shows that he rapes her, off stage. After a few weeks, Blanche is taking a bath while Stella and Eunice pack her bags. The men are playing poker in the kitchen. They have made plans for Blanche to go to a mental hospital, but Blanche is still sure that Shep Huntley is going to come get her. Blanche is said to have told Stella about the rape, but Stella doesn't believe her. Blanche is crazy when she gets out of the bath, she worries about how clean the grapes are and talks about drowning in the sea. As soon as the doctor and matron from the hospital walk in, Blanche walks right past the poker players and to the door. When she sees that this is not Shep Huntley coming to take her away, she fights back at first, running back into the house like a scared animal, but she can't get away from the matron. Stanley pulls the paper lantern off the light bulb. Blanche is caught by the matron, who drags her out. Blanche is calmed down when the doctor calls her by name. She clings to her last bit of pride and says, Whoever you are, I have always relied on the kindness of strangers. She is led off stage by the doctor. While holding her baby, Stella breaks down in luxurious sobbing, and Stanley hugs and kisses her to make her feel better. About the author Born in Columbus, Mississippi, Williams moved to St. Louis, Missouri as a child. Williams's literary career began early, at age 16, Williams won $5 for an essay entitled, Can a Good Wife Be a Good Sport? Williams attended the University of Missouri, where he frequently entered writing contests as a source of extra income. But after Williams failed military training during junior year, his father pulled him out of college and put him to work in a factory. 
At age 24, Williams suffered a nervous breakdown, left his job, and returned to college, studying at Washington University in St. Louis but finally graduating from the University of Iowa in 1938. Williams lived in the French Quarter of New Orleans in 1939, writing for the Works Progress Administration. He later traveled to Hollywood to work as a screenwriter. He was dead at age 71. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.